Well, we have a really special opportunity and moment here in our service where we have the privilege of installing Matt Luke and Bill as a pastor here at New City. And this is always uh, a very high moment in the church because it shows uh, the height and the significance of what it means to be a minister uh, in the church uh, of which Jesus Christ is Lord. And we are so thankful to have uh, Matt and his family that the Lord has called here, Matt and Michelle, their children, and to have Matt here serving as the pastor of, of uh, students and family ministries. And this morning, uh, these things become uh, more formalized and official, uh, just pointing to the reality that the Lord has called them here. And for this to happen, we uh, have elders uh, from various churches who are here uh, to be a part in this. And I just want to, well, here's Matt right here. And we have actually the privilege of having Matt's father, Tom Lucanbill, who is a pastor uh, in uh, Winter Haven, Florida, Cypress, Cypress Ridge. We're so glad to have you here this morning. Tom. We have Dave Sanger, who's a ruling elder at Knox Presbyterian Church. You know Scott Cairo, one of our own here at, uh, at New City. We have Ron DeCucu, who comes to us from Brighton. And Ron, we're so glad to have you here with us. Wayne Bohr, one of our own ruling elders, and Walter Lorenz uh, from Grand Rapids. Walter, we are so glad to have you guys. Each of these men uh, have a part this morning. And the first thing we're going to do, actually, is we have vows and questions to the candidate himself. And I will hand this over to Walter Lorenz. Well, Matt, these uh, questions are in some sense formal, but they're very wonderful and meaningful. Uh, we know that you've given much thought to these, and so has the church. So we ask you now, are you now willing to take charge of this congregation as their pastor, agreeable to your declaration in accepting their call? Yes. And do you conscientiously believe and declare, as far as you know your own heart, that in taking upon you this charge, you are influenced by a sincere desire to promote the glory of God and the good of the church? Yes. And do you solemnly promise that by the assistance of the grace of God, you will endeavor faithfully to discharge all the duties of a pastor to this congregation and will be careful to maintain a deportment in all aspects that is becoming a minister of the gospel of Christ agreeable to your ordination engagements. I am. Amen. And questions for the congregation, if you could answer affirmatively for these four questions. Do you, the people of New City Presbyterian Church, continue to profess your readiness to receive Matt Lucanbill, whom you've called to be your pastor? Do you promise to receive the word of truth from his mouth with meekness and love and to submit to him in the due exercise of discipline? Do you promise to encourage him in his labors and to assist his endeavors for your instruction and spiritual edification? Do you engage to continue to him while he is your pastor that competent worldly maintenance which you have promised and to furnish him with whatever you may see needful of religion and for his comfort among you? Well, thank you. This is so special to be able to have Tom Lucanbill, who is Matt's father and a pastor, uh, to offer the formal charge. This is common as pastors are installed to receive a charge from God's word to remind us of what this is that the Lord has called him to. So, Tom, thank you for being here, and, and you may give the charge. Well, it's a pleasure and honor to be here. If I can juggle my pages here. <clears throat> It's a pleasure and honor to be here, and, and um, Matt, you know, it's a, what a wonderful thing it is, what a blessing it is that you've been called here to this church, to this great group of people, to be able to be an assistant pastor to them. But we know that being called to be a pastor, it's a sober calling, it's a weighty calling, 
but yet it's a joyful calling because as we're going to about to see, we get to proclaim Jesus. That's our job is to go and to proclaim Jesus. And the congregation's job is also in there that the congregation, because you know, being a pastor is a difficult thing. We we covet your prayers. Matt and Ryan and the rest of the staff, they they covet your prayers to be in regular prayer for them. Put notes on your kitchen tables so that you, you do bring them up on a regular basis to face the challenges that they do have to chase, face. But Matt, for you, the, the charge I'd like to give you this morning is, is from Colossians chapter 1, where Paul is telling the people there what his calling is and the calling of those ministering along with him. And he says this, he says, Christ we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all his energy, that he powerfully works within me. So the first thing we see there is, like I already said, our job is we get to proclaim Jesus. What an honor and what a blessing it is. But as I thought about that, who do we proclaim Jesus to? Well, we need to proclaim Jesus to ourselves, and we need to proclaim Jesus to our congregation. So we must have listening ears, and our congregation must have listening ears to what the Lord would call us to. But we do that with a purpose. He tells us that the purpose is that we may be able to present everyone mature in Christ. So we are to teach and preach in such a way that calls other people and calls ourselves to continual growth and maturity in Christ. But it takes boldness because in there it says we have to warn everyone. If you look that word up, it means we have to call people to, to, to cease and to avoid all sorts of temptation, to avoid all sorts of sinful activity. And that takes boldness to do that. But we don't do that with our wisdom. It's the wisdom it tells us that we get from above. But then it tells us that we get to teach people how to live as Christ has lived. So we, we proclaim him in a bold way that brings people to maturity by warning and by teaching. And then it tells us it's work. Because Paul says, for this I toil. It's, it is work. But then he says this. He says, struggling with all his energy that he powerfully works within me. And I like to think of it like this. If God has called you and God has called you to this, to this ministry, you don't do it on your own abilities. You don't do it on your own strength or energy. It's the wisdom he gives to us and the energy that he powerfully works within us. Amen. Thank you, Tom. What an encouragement. What a challenge. Matt, would you come front and center here? And I'm going to ask that the elders gather around. We're going to lay hands on our brother, Matt, and pray for him and his ministry here. And receive him as a pastor. Please join us as we pray. Our Heavenly Father, these moments always lift our eyes to see your sovereign hand at work to guard and to care for your church. Lord, it has been your will from before Matt was even born that he'd be here at this moment on his knees before these people. You have prepared him for this task. You've prepared him for this field, for this ministry. And Lord, we give you thanks that in your sovereign providence that you have led Matt to this chapter of his life and we give you thanks for him. And Lord, as his father just so wonderfully shared, we pray that, that Matt would have listening ears, that his ears would always be attentive to the truth of the gospel, and that Matt would walk in line with the truth of the gospel, and that Matt would warn and would guard and would proclaim the truth of the gospel to these people, that he would proclaim Jesus Christ and him crucified, that his love and his understanding and uh, his treasuring of the gospel would continue to grow as he ministers this gospel to these people. Lord, we pray that through his ministry, more and more people would be, would be added to the number of the church who are being saved. We pray that more and more people who are finding themselves in the deep, dark valleys of discouragement and of a struggling faith and of a struggling life would find light and joy through the ministry of Matt's teaching and preaching of your word and gospel. We pray for his ministry among the students and families here at New City, that family trees for hundreds of years to come would be richly blessed as a result of his faithful ministry, that he would put into practice the words we've just heard from Colossians of, of warning and, and, and teaching and being a man of the gospel. 
Lord, it is so easy for hearts to drift, and we pray that his heart would not drift. We pray that you would guard his heart. We pray that you would guard his family, guard his marriage with Michelle. We pray that, that their ministry in the church would be a joy not only to them but to their children, and that that joy would overflow here at New City. And we pray, oh God, that Matt's ministry here at New City would be a beautiful relationship together with these people, that as he shepherds this flock, that this flock would love their shepherd and that Matt would be mutually encouraged and lifted up and edified uh, by these people here at New City. Lord, we pray that this church would bear fruit and that this church would continue to have a heart to see your kingdom advance, that Matt would would be a part of, of stirring that passion up and the power of your spirit. God, we pray that together we would continue in, in ministry that we would proclaim the gospel not only to ourselves, not only to this congregation, but for those outside the walls of this church, that many would know the wonderful news of Jesus Christ, that this news would be brought to their families and to the hurting of this city. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we thank you so much for Matt, Luke, and Bill, for his family, that you've called them here to serve as a pastor at New City Presbyterian Church. We pray that you will be most glorified and exalted through their ministry. And we lift him up to you in the saving name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Would you please join me in welcoming our newest pastor here in New City? Yes. Brother, it is a privilege and an honor to serve with you and to have you here in New City. And we will continue to pray for you. Let's all extend the right hand of fellowship to our new pastor here.